Major General James Wolfe was a British Army officer, known for his training reforms but remembered chiefly for his victory over the French at the Battle of the Plains of Abraham in Canada in 1759. The son of a distinguished general, Edward Wolfe, he had received his first commission at a young age and saw extensive service in Europe where he fought during the War of the Austrian Succession. His service in Flanders and in Scotland, where he took part in the suppression of the Jacobite Rebellion, brought him to the attention of his superiors. The advancement of his career was halted by the Peace Treaty of 1748 and he spent much of the next eight years on garrison duty in the Scottish Highlands. Already a brigade major at the age of 18, he was a lieutenant colonel by the age of 23. The outbreak of the Seven Years' War in 1756 offered Wolfe fresh opportunities for advancement. His part in the aborted raid on Rochefort in 1757 led William Pitt to appoint him second in command of an expedition to capture the fortress of Louisbourg. Following the success of the Siege of Louisbourg he was made commander of a force which sailed up the St. Lawrence River to capture Quebec City. After a long siege Wolfe defeated a French force under Louis-Joseph de Montcalm allowing British forces to capture the city. Wolfe was killed at the height of the Battle of the Plains of Abraham due to injuries from three musket balls. Wolfe's part in the taking of Quebec in 1759 earned him posthumous fame, and he became an icon of Britain's victory in the Seven Years' War and subsequent territorial expansion. He was depicted in the painting The Death of General Wolfe, which became famous around the world. Wolfe was posthumously dubbed the Hero of Quebec, the Conqueror of Quebec, and also the Conqueror of Canada. Since the capture of Quebec led directly to the capture of Montreal, ending French control of the country. Early life James Wolfe was born at the local vicarage on 2 January 1727 at Westerham, Kent, the older of two sons of Colonel Edward Wolfe, a veteran soldier of Irish origin, and the former Henrietta Thompson. His uncle was Edward Thompson MP, a distinguished politician. His relatively humble birth marked him out from many army officers at the time, who were disproportionately drawn from the aristocracy or gentry. Wolfe's childhood home in Westerham, known in his lifetime as Spears, has been preserved in his memory by the National Trust under the name Quebec House. Wolfe's family were long settled in Ireland and he regularly corresponded with his uncle Major Walter Wolfe in Dublin. Stephen Wolfe, the distinguished Irish politician and judge of the next century, was from the Limerick branch of the same family. The Wolfes were close to the Ward family, who lived at Scares Court in Westerham. Wolfe's boyhood friend George Ward would later achieve fame as commander-in-chief in Ireland when he crushed the Irish Rebellion of 1798, and repelled two attempted French invasions in 1796 and 1798. Around 1738, the family moved to Greenwich, in London. From his earliest years, Wolfe was destined for a military career, entering his father's 1st Marine Regiment as a volunteer at the age of 13. He was fortunate to miss what proved to be a disaster for the British forces at the Siege of Cartagena during the War of Jenkins Ear with most of the expedition dying from disease. War of the Austrian Succession European War In 1740 the War of the Austrian Succession broke out in Europe. Although initially Britain did actively intervene, the presence of a sizable French army near the border of the Austrian Netherlands compelled the British to send an expedition to help defend the territory of their Austrian ally in 1742. James Wolfe was given his first commission as a second lieutenant in his father's regiment of marines in 1741. Early in the following year he transferred to the 12th Regiment of Foot, a British Army infantry regiment, and set sail for Flanders some months later where the British took up position in Ghent. Here, Wolfe was promoted to lieutenant and made adjutant of his battalion. His first year on the continent was a frustrating one as, despite rumours of a British attack on Dunkirk, they remained inactive in Flanders. In 1743, he was joined by his younger brother, Edward, who had received a commission in the same regiment. 
That year the Wolf Brothers took part in an offensive launched by the British, instead of moving southwards as expected. The British and their allies instead thrust eastwards into southern Germany where they faced a large French army. The army came under the personal command of George II but in June he appeared to have made a catastrophic mistake which left the Allies trapped against the river main and surrounded by enemy forces in a mousetrap. Rather than contemplate surrender, George tried to rectify the situation by launching an attack on the French positions near the village of Dessingen. Wolfe's regiment was involved in heavy fighting, as the two sides exchanged volley after volley of musket fire. His regiment had suffered the highest casualties of any of the British infantry battalions, and Wolfe had his horse shot from underneath him. Despite three French attacks the Allies managed to drive off the enemy, who fled through the village of Dettingen which was then occupied by the Allies. However, George failed to adequately pursue the retreating enemy, allowing them to escape. In spite of this the Allies had successfully thwarted the French move into Germany, safeguarding the independence of Hanover. Wolfe's regiment at Battle of Dettingen came to the attention of the Duke of Cumberland who had been close to him during the battle when they came under enemy fire. A year later, he became a captain of the 45th Regiment of Foot. After the success of Dettington, the 1744 campaign was another frustration as the Allies' forces now led by George Wade failed to complete their objective of capturing Lille, fought no major battles, and returned to winter quarters at Ghent without anything to show for their efforts. Wolfe was left devastated when his brother Edward died, probably of consumption, that autumn. Wolfe's regiment was left behind to garrison Ghent which meant they missed the Allied defeat at the Battle of Fontenoy in May 1745 during which Wolfe's former regiment suffered extremely heavy casualties. Wolfe's regiment was then summoned to reinforce the main Allied army, now under the command of the Duke of Cumberland. Shortly after they had departed Ghent, the town was suddenly attacked by the French who captured it and its garrison. Having narrowly avoided becoming a French prisoner, Wolfe was now made a brigade major. Jacobite rising in October 1745, Wolfe's regiment was urgently recalled to Acadians to deal with the Jacobite rising which had broken out. In September Jacobite forces had won the Battle of Preston Pans and captured Edinburgh. They were poised to march into Britain where they expected a mass Jacobite rebellion to break out that would topple George II and his Hanoverian dynasty and replace them with the young pretender, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Wolfe and his regiment were initially sent to Newcastle to bolster a force commanded by General Wade to prevent a Jacobite advance along the east coast. Instead, the rebels bypassed Wade's army at Newcastle by heading down the opposite coast via Carlisle. The Jacobites reached as far as Derby and only a force of militia stood between him and London. However, having encountered limited English support for their cause the Jacobites decided to withdraw and by the end of the year they were back in France and Government forces prepared for what they believed would be a relatively easy campaign that would crush the rebels. Wolfe served in Scotland in 1746 as aide-de-camp under General Henry Hawley in the campaign to defeat the Jacobite forces of Charles Edward Stuart. In this capacity, Wolfe participated in the Battle of Falkirk and the Battle of Culloden. At Culloden, he famously refused to shoot a wounded Highlander when he was ordered by the Duke of Cumberland stating that he would rather resign his post than sacrifice his honour. However, the gesture did work, and the man was shot by Cumberland himself. It has been suggested that it may have been Hawley who gave the order rather than Cumberland. This act may have been a cause for his later popularity among the Royal Highland Fusiliers, whom he would command in North America. After this he took part in the pacification of the Highlands, designed to destroy the remnants of the rebellion. Return to the continent In January 1747 Wolfe returned to the continent and the War of the Austrian Succession, serving under Sir John Mordaunt. 
The French had taken advantage of the absence of Cumberland's British troops and had made advances in the Austrian Netherlands including the capture of Brussels. The major French objective in 1747 was to capture Maastricht considered the gateway to the Dutch Republic. Wolfe was part of Cumberland's army, which marched to protect the city from the advancing French force under Marshal Saxe. On 2 July Wolfe participated in the Battle of Laufeld. He was very badly wounded and received an official commendation for services to Britain. Laufeld was the largest battle in terms of numbers in which Wolfe fought, with the combined strength of both armies totaling over 140,000. Following their narrow victory at Laufeld, the French captured Maastricht and seized no more strategic fortress at bergen op Zoom. Both sides remained poised for further offensives, but an armistice halted the fighting. In 1748, at just 21 years of age and with service in seven campaigns, Wolfe returned to Britain following the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle which ended the war. Under the treaty, Britain and France had agreed to exchange all captured territory and the Austrian Netherlands were returned to Austrian control. Peacetime service Scottish garrison once home, he was posted to Scotland and garrison duty, and a year later was made a major, in which rank he assumed command of the 20th Regiment, stationed at Stirling. In 1750, Wolfe was confirmed as Lieutenant Colonel of the Regiment. During the eight years Wolfe remained in Scotland, he wrote military pamphlets and became proficient in French, as a result of several trips to Paris. Despite struggling with bouts of ill health suspected to be tuberculosis, he also tried to keep himself mentally fit by teaching himself Latin and mathematics. Also Wolfe trained his body too, pushing himself to improve his swordsmanship and attending sessions where he learned about science and how to improve his leadership skills. Wolfe worked hard despite his illness and learned from many people. Wolfe had made the number of influential acquaintances during the recent war. His father, who was now a general, also actively assisted his son's career. In 1752 Wolfe was granted extended leave, and he first went to Ireland staying in Dublin with his uncle and visiting Belfast and the site of the Battle of the Boyne. After a brief stop at his parents' house in Greenwich he received permission from the Duke of Cumberland to go abroad and he crossed the Channel to France. He took in the sights of Paris including the Tuileries Gardens and visited the Palace of Versailles. He was frequently entertained by the British ambassador, Earl of Albemarle, with whom he had served in Scotland in 1746. Albemarle arranged an audience for Wolfe with Louis XV. While in Paris Wolfe spent money on improving his French and his fencing skills. He applied for further leave so he could witness a major military exercise by the French army, but he was instead urgently ordered home. He rejoined his regiment in Glasgow. By 1754 Britain's declining relationship with France made a fresh war imminent and fighting broke out in North America between the two sides. Disciplined desertion, especially in the face of the enemy had always officially been regarded as a capital offence. Wolfe laid particular stress on the importance of the death penalty and in 1755 he ordered that any soldier who broke ranks should be instantly put to death by an officer or sergeant. Seven Years War In 1756, with the outbreak of open hostilities with France, Wolfe was promoted to colonel. He was stationed in Canterbury, where his regiment had been posted to guard his home county of Kent against a French invasion threat. He was extremely dispirited by news of the loss of Minorca in June 1756, lamenting what he saw as the lack of professionalism amongst the British forces. Despite a widespread belief that French landing was imminent, Wolfe thought that it was unlikely his men would be called into action. In spite of this, he trained them diligently and issued fighting instructions to his troops. As the threat of invasion decreased, the regiment was marched to Wiltshire. Despite the initial setbacks of the war in Europe and North America, the British were now expected to take the offensive and Wolfe anticipated playing a major role in future operations. 
However, his health was beginning to decline, which led to suspicions that he was suffering, as his younger brother had, from consumption. Many of his letters to his parents began to assume a slightly fatalistic note in which he talked of the likelihood of an early death. Rochefort in 1757 Wolf participated in the British amphibious assault on Rochefort, a seaport on the French Atlantic coast. A major naval descent, it was designed to capture the town, and relieve pressure on Britain's German allies who were under French attack in northern Europe. Wolf was selected to take part in the expedition partly because of his friendship with its commander, Sir John Mordaunt. In addition to his regimental duties, Wolfe also served as quartermaster general for the whole expedition. The force was assembled on the Isle of Wight and after weeks of delay finally sailed on 7 September. The attempt failed as, after capturing an island offshore, the British made no attempt to land on the mainland and press on to Rochefort and instead withdrew home. While their sudden appearance off the French coast had spread panic throughout France, it had little practical effect. Mordaunt was court-martialed for his failure to attack Rochefort, although acquitted. Nonetheless, Wolfe was one of the few military leaders who had distinguished himself in the raid, having gone ashore to scout the terrain, and having constantly urged Mordaunt into action. He had at one point told the general that he could capture Rochefort if he was given just 500 men but Mordaunt refused him permission, while Wolfe was irritated by the failure, believing that they should have used the advantage of surprise and attacked and taken the town immediately. He was able to draw valuable lessons about amphibious warfare that influenced his later operations at Louisbourg and Quebec. As a result of his actions at Rochefort, Wolfe was brought to the notice of the Prime Minister, William Pitt the Elder. Pitt had determined that the best gains in the war were to be made in North America where France was vulnerable, and planned to launch an assault on French Canada. Pitt now decided to promote Wolfe over the heads of a number of senior officers. Louisbourg on 23 January 1758, James Wolfe was appointed as a brigadier general, and sent with Major General Geoffrey Amherst in the fleet of Admiral Boscawin to lay siege to fortress of Louisbourg in New France. Louisbourg stood near the mouth of the St. Lawrence River and its capture was considered essential to any attack on Canada from the east. An expedition the previous year had failed to seize the town because of a French naval build-up. For 1758 Pitt sent a much larger Royal Navy force to accompany Amherst's troops. Wolfe distinguished himself in preparations for the assault, the initial landing and in the aggressive advance of siege batteries. The French capitulated in June of that year in the Siege of Louisbourg. He then participated in the expulsion of the Acadians in the Gulf of St. Lawrence campaign. The British had initially planned to advance along the St. Lawrence and attack Quebec that year, but the onset of winter forced him to postpone to the following year. Similarly a plan to capture New Orleans was rejected, and Wolfe returned home to England. Wolfe's part in the taking of the town brought him to the attention of the British public for the first time. The news of the victory at Louisbourg was tempered by the failure of a British force advancing towards Montreal at the Battle of Carillon and the death of George Howe, a widely respected young general whom Wolfe described as the best officer in the British Army.